What's going on guys? This is Ryan with RK Outpost and I just got done watching episode 8, the season finale of The Mandalorian called Redemption. Now, if you've been on this channel, you know I've been critical of some of the things that happened in Mandalorian. Uh, I thought it started really strong. I thought the middle was basically garbage and I thought episodes 6, 6 was really good except it didn't have anything to do with plot. 7 was awesome. This one continues right along with 7 and um, you know, we will get into spoilers later, but just right now, the overall view I have, I'm going to need to watch this series once, like all just back to back to kind of see how I feel about it. But uh, it wasn't quite as jarring director, director change from Deborah Chai to Taika Waititi. There was something in the very beginning that I uh, really pissed me off and I thought it was going to be this way throughout the entire thing, but it was just in the beginning Overall, I think it was a really good connection from episode seven to eight, which is one of the things I've been missing in this series. It's felt so different episode to episode, the style and everything. But this was one pretty coherent story all the way through it, in my opinion. Um, as far as a, an ending, uh, it, it was really good. I think it wrapped up, well, it didn't really wrap up too much, but it gave us enough of a wrap up and it's clear where they're going in the next season. It wasn't some huge cliffhanger or, or anything like that. Um, you know, things were pretty resolved with definitely a way that we're going to go forward in chapter two, but I might as well just go into it. Let's get into spoilers right now. So if you have not watched or you want to watch, uh, episode eight of the Mandalorian tune out now so you don't uh, get spoiled. So we start off basically right where we left off. You know, if you remember from end of chapter seven, uh, Quill has died while trying to get the child to the Razor's Crest, and he was picked up by a couple scout troopers, and that's where we leave off. These scout troopers heading back into town in Navarro, and they stop, they're talking, they're waiting for orders because evidently Moff Gideon's going crazy in town. He's killed a bunch of his own people, so they're not sure if it's safe for them to come back yet, so they're just holding there. Um, this is directed by Taika Waititi, who is known for his humor and his comedy like he did in Thor Ragnarok. If you like Thor Ragnarok, that's fine. Um, but there's no doubt that it's a great departure from the Thor movies before it, that it was extremely comedic based. And that's what we got early on. And I thought that the whole thing was gonna be like this. And uh, I was like, oh, please, not the whole thing. And luckily it was just this beginning part uh, they have a little back and forth. They do this thing where, oh, they're trying to hit this piece of equipment on the ground as they're sitting there bored, and they can't hit it because, get it? Stormtroopers can't shoot. Get it? Uh, which is basically just a meme but isn't real life. So uh, they have that moment, and then they're actually hitting the child. They're hitting baby Yoda. I'm sure there's going to be some girls who are really upset about that. But they were hitting him, and he's, like, crying because he's being too loud. <laughs> but... Uh, after that, um, they're sitting there, they've hit the child, everything, they're waiting, and IG-11 comes up, he says, you know, I'm basically programmed to protect, and they tell him, go away. He snaps their arm and just kills them, uh, grabs grabs the child and hops on a speeder and says, you know, uh, I'm programmed to protect whatever he says, because he's been reprogrammed by Quill, he's no longer a hunter, he is a nursing droid and a protector. And you think, all right, he's going to go back to the ship. Not quite. Uh, so if you remember, uh, everyone else, the Mandalorian, Cara Dune, and Grief Karga are holed up in where that Imperial had been holing up. And, you know, all of those stormtroopers, all of the death troopers, and Moff Gideon are standing outside. Well, uh, IG-11 heads back into town. Uh, I don't know why he didn't go back to the Razor's Crest. It would seem the best place to protect the child. Uh, maybe Quill programmed in there for him to protect everyone. But he heads into town and... He's just going like full throttle, shooting them with the speeder bike, uh, shooting the stormtroopers that are at the gate, shooting like, you know, uh, having the guns in his arms and twirling around and everything as he's going through. Cool scene, cool scene. Um, the Mandalorian is sitting there. They, they're they getting talked to by Grief Karga. They're trying to find a way out. He says, well, the Mandalorian covert was in the sewers. Maybe we can get down there. They see a sewer grate, but they can't have any way to break through it. Cara Dune is like, shooting her blaster at it just to try to get through. Um, and Moff Gideon, who I like Moff Gideon, Giancarlo Esposito. I said this at the end of chapter seven, we only got like a couple lines from him, but I was immediately like, this is a villain. This is a Star Wars villain, right? You were intimidated by him. He was extremely confident 
and sure of himself and what he was doing. And I really, he wasn't some bumbling idiot. I really enjoyed it. So we, uh, we have him basically saying, hey, I know who all you people are. And he like describes them all. And you hear the Mandalorian's name for the first time in this series. We knew it, we had heard from it before in reports and things like that. But Din Djarin, he says his name. Um, he knows all about him. He says Cara Dune from Alderaan, the rebel shock trooper. He knows who Grief Karga is, who he used to be. So he's clearly like well prepared and knows everything about them. And when that happens, the Mandalorian knows that he was ISB, Imperial Security Bureau. He has to be because those are the only people that had records to when he last heard that name, which is when he became a founding, when he took the creed, basically. And then you have a flashback scene. You finally get the full flashback scene to when he was a child, when his parents were hiding him, when they were attacked by all of the droids. And we were always wondering who is going to save him, who's going to save him. A lot of people thought Obi-Wan, some people were like Ahsoka, some people were like Bo-Katan, you know, there were a lot of guesses. In the end, it turns out to be Death Watch. Death Watch seems to be, at least from what I could tell, I haven't looked into it or anything, I basically just got done watching the video, but, uh, you know, it seemed like it was supposed to be Death Watch troopers. They were definitely Mandalorians, it seemed like Death Watch. So that was my interpretation of what it was, that they had been the ones to save him, and he had gone on to become a foundling. And he's kind of explaining that. And uh, they, they still need to find a way to escape. So he goes through that whole flashback in season. And they calm IG-11, or they try to calm Quill again, because they're basically like, he would have already attacked us if he had the child. That's what they want. They want the child. So they haven't attacked us yet, which means they haven't got it. And they pull out this huge E-Web cannon. It's a huge mounted cannon that you could use to like blast through doors and stuff. If you ever had Glow up, up against the E-Web in Jedi Outcast, it was like the real deal. So anyway, uh, Moff Gideon gives them till sundown to make a decision whether to come out or not, which I think is strange. He looks up in the sky and it, it looks like the sun's like right in the air. And he's like, I'll give you to sundown. So he's giving them like hours to decide. Seems silly, but that was a minor point. But IG-11... Um, basically gets on the comms like i'm coming i i am programmed to protect he just wades right in the battle you see like everybody start to turn their attention from where our our heroes are hiding to the side where ig11 is just coming in and wrecking stuff uh he jumps off the speeder bike it explodes in the middle of people he is doing the thing that we saw in the first episode spinning around doing all this stuff he has the child strapped to his chest and he's like turning at the right moments to take blaster bolts on his back so it doesn't hit uh, baby Yoda. I did think it was weird that if he's supposed to protect the child that he would take him to battle like that, it's literally just like one stray bullet could have killed him. So I don't exactly understand that, but it was, it was a cool sequence anyways, cool action sequence as he's doing that, you know, everybody else, the Mandalorian, uh, and grief car come out while Cara Dune is laying down, suppressing fire from the building they're in. And they wade into it. The Mandalorian has some sweet battle sequences. Uh, he does get shot a couple times, but his best car protects him. And eventually he goes to that E-Web and he picks it up somehow. This thing's huge. It's supposed to be mounted. He somehow manages to pick it up and manages to spray fire all over the battlefield, kill a bunch of people. But Moff Gideon is still there. He shoots the Mandalorian in the back of the head. Best car protects him as he turns around with the E-Web once realizing that he can't get through it, Moff Gideon shoots. Uh, it, it looks like the the power, like uh, the huge power pack that's associated with the E-Web cannon, and it explodes. Mandalorian goes flying. He's clearly like unconscious. Everybody retreats. So Cara Dune goes out and grabs the Mandalorian. She's really worried about him. Grief Karga, IG-11, they all come in. Mandalorian's like, oh, I, I'm not going to make it. Take the child. Take the child. Save them. I'm not going to make it. And IG-11 cuts through the sewer grate, and they're making their way down there. And there's this moment, Cardoon's like, please, please tell me that you're going to save him. And IG-11's like, I will. He's like, I need to take your, IG-11's like, I need to take your helmet off to save you. This is after Cardoon and Grief Card are gone. I need to take your helmet off to save you. And he's like, no, I'll kill you if you do. I'd rather die. No living thing's allowed to see me with this off. And he's like, I'm not a living thing. And he allows him to take it off. You see uh, Pedro Pascal... And you're like, all right, well, maybe I didn't need to see his helmet off. <laughs> but uh, he sprays him back on him, and he's good to go. 
So we bring them back down. Uh, the Mandalorians find out they're looking for the Mandalorian covert. They find just tons of Mandalorian armor, pieces of Mandalorian armor sitting down there. Clearly meaning that a bunch of Mandalorians have been killed. He thinks it's Grief Karga's hunters at first, but then the armor, the one that made his armor is still there. She's down there. She's been melting down that Mandalorian armor. She doesn't feel like she can go, I guess, until it's done. Um, they have a conversation. He basically says, what am I supposed to do with this child? She says, well, he's your foundling now. He explains that the baby, baby, oh, I forgot about this. The child uses the force. So they're backed into this corner before they go in the sewer and a flame trooper comes in and is just spraying the place. And before it like overcomes them with flames, baby Yoda stands up, uses the force, keeps the flames back and then pushes it back towards a flame trooper, blowing him out. And then he passes out. So we get another force use by the child. Um, there it is. And the Mandalorian says what he can do. The armor says, I've heard of these things. Back uh, when Mandalore the Great, he used to have war, or Mandalore the Great, I don't know if you're here or not. Mandalore the Great used to have great wars against people who could do that. They were called the Jedi. They were sorcerers, essentially. And uh, he's like, are, there en are they enemies? Or is this one our enemy? She's like, no, I mean, this one isn't. This one hasn't done anything. That was in a war. This one's just a baby. And she says that basically you guys are bound together. That it's a found lane, but it can't be trained because it's it's not strong enough, obviously. But you need to take it back and find its species, return it to its home. So that is the setup for the next season of what's going to be happening. Um, and also it tells the man owner that he's earned his signet because he saved... The, the child, the child saved him, puts the mud horn on him. It looked like the mud horn anyway. That's going to be his signet. He earned it. And she also gives him a jet pack saying, you can't use this until you're ready. You must have training, uh, which doesn't come into play later because he just uses it for the hell of it. Um, and then they go off. Some stormtroopers do come to try to get her. Only like five of them. She destroys them all in a pretty cool little action sequence. Um, I don't know her fate. That's the last we see of her. Um, then they need to go down. So our heroes, I keep sounding that, but Mandalorian, Cara Dune, Grief Karga, and IG-11, and the child uh, need to head down this lava river, which was pretty cool looking. Uh, they hop on this transport. Um, of course, the guys don't know what they're doing, but Cara Dune's like, step aside, and she shoots all the, all the dried lava off and goes back in the river. Um... They hop on it, this astromech droid that you think is piloting it all of a sudden just stands up and it's got arms. You think it looks just like an R2 unit, but it has a bunch of arms and stuff. It's like the fairy captain. It's very strange. Very, it was very shocking when that happened. But they're heading out the river, but it's an ambush. There's stormtroopers there. And they have this moment where IG-11 says, my program says I can't be captured. I need to self-destruct. Um, Mandalorian's like, but no, I mean, that's not... Like, you've been reprogrammed for protection. Is, doesn't that override your manufacturer's programming? And he says, yes, but there's no hope. If there's, like, no hope for us to to escape this ambush, if there's no hope for the child, then uh, that's violating my programming. He's like, please take care of the child. Let me do this. Let me, let me self-destruct and save everyone. Please tell me that you'll keep the child safe so I can default to my manufacturer's programming. And you're supposed to have this moment where the Mandalorian is like, oh, I, you know, he's getting over. He has an attachment to IG-11 now that he saved everyone. He trusts IG-11. He's getting over his fear of droids, which has been so prevalent. So that's what they're supposed to be doing. Um, yeah, it works. Um, some, I wasn't like emotional about it or anything. I'm sure some people will be. I thought it was fine. And he's like, I can tell you're sad. And he's like, I'm not sad. He's like, I'm a nursing droid. I'm programmed to tell if you're sad or not. So that happens, IG-11 steps off into the lava, walks out in the middle of these stormtroopers, blows himself up, IG-11 is dead. At least for now, maybe there's another IG droid somewhere. So he, he's made this sacrifice, everyone else is safe. They get out, and you're thinking, alright, well what now? And you see Moff Gideon's TIE fighter coming around, um, misses them on the first pass, luckily. Their blasters don't do any good against it, they're like, what are we going to do? Obviously, from the trailers, you saw there was a moment where Moff Gideon was in a TIE fighter and the Mandalorian attacked him on him. 
So I basically knew it was going to happen, unfortunately, just because I'd seen a trailer. Um, and on the next pass, he puts on the jetpack, zooms up into the air, and attaches himself using his cable. Uh, there's a struggle. He's trying to, Moff Gideon's trying to get the Mandalorian off of it. Mandalorian luckily pulls some charges out, which I thought that this was like a plot hole or something or something they hadn't thought about because they couldn't get in the sewers because the Mandalorian's like, I don't have any more charges. But then I remembered that the armor said, replenish your munitions. So I think you can safely assume that in that time that they re, you know, they re, uh, they got a bunch more ammo and uh, explosives and things like that. I think that's reasonable to assume, even though we didn't see it happen. But he has a couple charges that he's able to place on the uh, the linkage between the wing and the cockpit of the TIE fighter. He lets go, the TIE fighter explodes, the wing flies off and it crashes. And he's able to safely descend, safely use the jetpack, even though he hasn't trained it at all. He doesn't look perfect or anything. Definitely looks like he doesn't quite know what he's doing. And he lands. And they're home free. That's it. They've basically killed everybody. And Grief, Karga, and Cara Dune decide to stay on Navarro, with Cara Dune being his enforcer there. I don't think we've seen the last of them. I hope not, anyway. Because the moments where everyone's together is my favorite parts of this series, when it's the Mandalorian and his team. That's been my favorite parts, so I would like to get more like that in the second season. Um, Mandalorian heads back with the child because he now has to find where the child belongs. That's his new duty as it's basically caretaker. They go back to the Razor's Crest. He buries Quill. He has a little monument to Quill and hops on the Razor's Crest, sees the, um, sees the Mandalorian symbol, uh, on baby Yoda and like basically lets him keep it because he is kind of a Mandalorian now, I guess that's what they're going with. And he takes off. As he takes off, you see the wreckage of the TIE fighter. And you kind of, th that's the end, but there's, it's not quite over. You always got to have a little cliffhanger for season two. Um, it had been made clear that Grief, or that uh, Moff Gideon had been an ISB, had been someone who had um, been involved in the, the sacking of Mandalore. Um, and as his TIE fighter is getting like rummaged by Jawas, you see something start to cut out of the way. And immediately I'm like, it's probably a lightsaber. Uh, it's probably a lightsaber. And sure enough, as he completes it, you see it's actually the dark saber. So if you remember from Clone Wars and Rebels, the dark saber was a huge thing, uh, really involved in Mandalorian culture. And um, I'm sure you're going to be seeing a lot of videos about the dark saber um, in the upcoming days from a lot of YouTubers and stuff. Um, essentially it just, it's a huge symbol in Mandalorian lore and Mandalorian culture, very important weapon. And for some reason, Moff Gideon has it. The last time we saw it was Bo-Katan. Now it's passed hands several times. Um, Pre Vizsla had it, uh, Darth Maul had it for a while. Sabine found it, Sabine had it. And Sabine is the one that gave it to Bo-Katan because she felt like she was the rightful leader of Mandalore, but that's years ago. So somehow in that time, Moff Gideon got his hands on it. And I'm sure that's going to be very instrumental in the next season. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I felt like this is a little more scattered review than I usually do, but I'm pretty tired. <laughs> Overall thoughts on Mandalorian Chapter 8. It was really good. Uh, I thought a lot of the combat was good, but it was more story-based too. There was so much plot in it. I got to learn more about Mandalorian culture. I got to learn a little more about my characters. Um, you know, I got to learn about where we're going forward. I liked it. It was so much better than so many of the filler episodes we had. Um, so do I, is this good enough to care about season two? Uh, I think that I'm going to have to hold off and do probably like one more watch front to back of this season to be like, yeah, I'm really excited for season two. I think you need to kind of see it all together. It ends on a really high note. I will say that Taika Waititi ends it on a really high note. I'm glad we didn't have that humor all the way through. Um, it was, it was very serious and Cara Dune felt something for the Mandalorian. You could clearly tell that, uh, Mandalorian felt something for IG 11 overall. It was just, it was a really good ending to the season. So 
for all the complaints and everything I have, and I still have issues with Baby Yoda, and evidently the, the next season is literally going to be all about uh, the child, Baby Yoda, and finding his species. So I can't, I don't know if I'm too keen for that necessarily, but overall pretty good. I want to hear your thoughts though. You know, what do you think about this episode? I, I just watched this, still, still kind of processing it. That's kind of how I do these reviews. I just start spitting stuff out. Um, and I always, it's funny, I waste my time. I waste my time taking all these notes and I never even look at them. So I don't know why I waste my time doing that. But anyway, let me know your thoughts of the Mandalorian chapter eight and the Mandalorian in general. Um, it's definitely the best thing Disney Star Wars has going for it at the moment. I don't think there's any doubts about that. It's so much better than the sequel trilogy. It's so much better than Rise of Skywalker. That doesn't mean it's perfect. That doesn't mean it's great or anything like that, but it is so much better in comparison. Very low bar, but still. Let me know your thoughts overall. If you're looking forward to season two, um, if this has made you believe that Jon Favreau uh, might be the guy for the job at Lucasfilm, because I think right now they'd be a pretty popular pick. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, hashtag it with The Mandalorian, because I'm sure it's probably trending right now. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching, everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.